Hi there, it's Peter here again. You're watching the Scroll Magic 101 free online course for front end developers and designers where you will learn the basics of Scroll Magic API in under 50 minutes. In this video, we will add one more section and we'll create a simple parallax effect with a text fading on top of the section. The first thing we'll do, we'll add another section for the parallax effect between the, between the project one and two. So let's go to index HTML and create a new div element, bcg hyphen parallax. Inside of it, we'll have another div with class bcg and then dot content hyphen wrapper. Okay. Inside of the content wrapper, we'll have a simple h1 with section with parallax effect and underneath just a paragraph with a lorem ipsum. So copy and paste the lorem ipsum from the info from one of the projects and paste it in. And that's the HTML we'll need for the parallax effect. Okay, container with a background that will have a background image and then inside of it content wrapper. If we review it in a browser, we'll see pretty ugly HTML. So let's style it now. But before we do that, scroll down to the bottom of the page and we want to include GreenSock. Okay, it's under the video. So copy and paste the link to TwinMax. And the other link we need to paste again from under the video is a link to the ScrollMagic GreenSock plugin. Okay, so animation.gsap will let us use GreenSock with ScrollMagic. So we'll need both scroll magic plugin and the green sock twin max now let's go to the style sheet and under the main we will firstly target the class bcg hyphen parallax we'll give it a padding 40 pixels and zero change the color to white because it sits on a darker background then we'll have a background color we'll give it a background color black so three zeros We'll text align everything in the middle, text align center. We'll give it a position relative and overflow hidden. Okay, we don't want the image to stick out of that container. That's why we're having the overflow hidden. Then we'll target the class BCG. That's the background image. So we'll apply the image to this as a background. URL and no repeat. The URL will be dot dot slash img slash img underscore background dot jpeg if it's not inside of the folder already grab it from under the video we'll change the background size to cover we want this image to stretch the full width and height then we'll give it a position absolute width 100 percent height will set to 140 percent okay so we want this to be a little bit bigger than the parent container so we'll give it a height 140 percent top zero z index one and opacity 0.7 okay we want the background to be faded out a little bit so the image will sit on the black background which means it will be a little bit darker and the last one will be content wrapper. We'll target the dot content wrapper. We'll give it a width 90%. So width 90%, margin zero auto. We wanna center it in the middle. We'll give it a max width 1140 pixels. So it doesn't stretch out any bigger than that. We'll give it a position relative and Z index two. Okay, so the content always sits on top of the image because the image has Z-index 1 and content wrapper Z-index 2. Okay, so this is the CSS. If I refresh it in the browser, we'll see the section with text align center and the background image applied to it. Let's increase slightly the padding. Let's go back to CSS and change the padding to, let's say, 150. Okay, this reveals a little bit more of the image and now we've got it set up for creating the scene. Now we'll go to the JavaScript file 
and under the pin again scene we will create a new one we'll call this parallax scene we'll create a new variable call it slide parallax scene without any spaces equals new scroll magic dot scene and as you can see I'm typing everything in just to practice okay you can copy and paste but practice makes masters that's why I'm typing everything in this time we will use set twin method and then we'll add it to a controller okay now let's fill in the options we'll set the trigger element to be the dot bcg <laughs> bcg dot bcg hyphen parallax we'll set the trigger hook to be the bottom of the page so we'll set the trigger hook to one and we'll set the duration to 200 percent okay so these are the settings for our scene and now we will need to define the twin okay what kind of animation we want to see over the duration of 200 percent okay we can pass in we can create a twin directly inside of the set twin method so let's create twin max dot from the element will be dot bcg so that's the background image container we'll, ch we'll keep the duration one and we'll change the y offset to minus 30 person okay so we want to animate that background image from minus 30 percent and we'll reset the ease to ease power zero is none okay so this is the twin that we want to run during the 200 percent of scrolling okay background is moving from minus 30 percent to zero which is the css position okay and then we're adding it to controller if you are new to GreenSock, check out the GreenSock 101, which is another free online course where you can learn more about GreenSock. Okay, this is the basic from twin, which should make sense once you go through the basic GreenSock 101 course. Now, when we look at the page, refresh the page, and we should see the image moving from the original or from the default minus 30 percent into the zero position and the text slides on top of it okay the bigger the image the more profound effect is if we set the duration to less so if i change the duration to 100 we'll see the image to move a little bit faster okay and also if we change the offset the default offset to let's say to be minus 50 again we'll see the image moving a little bit faster so, okay so based on the size of your section you need to define the right starting offset and as you can see we've got some black bar at the bottom that's because we've got it at the moment set to minus 50 so we'll need to increase the size inside of the CSS from the 140 to 150 okay so this should now make it without the black bars so always set the starting offset to the same size as your height of the element so at the moment we've got the height set to 150 so the maximum value we can set to the y offset is minus 50 okay so this looks pretty cool and it's animating from minus 50 to zero okay hope that works for you as well and now we'll do one more last tweak we want to the section with parallax effect text fade in at the same time as the background moving okay so when the text comes into a view we want it to be invisible and then fade in a little bit later on okay so this will need to be instead of including a twin we will include a timeline okay so let's go back to the top of the parallax scene and create a new variable call it parallax tl that will be new timeline max and now we will add twins to the timeline 
the first twin on the timeline will be from twin and we want to animate the content wrapper content hyphen wrapper we'll keep the duration one second and we want to fade it in so we'll set auto alpha to zero on a page load and we'll change it to again as is power zero is none and the second twin is the movement of the image okay so that will be from twin and that is exactly the same twin as we've already did before so we can copy or cut it from here and paste it inside of the timeline okay so we've got another from twin of the background duration is one second again y minus 50 and we've just copied copied it from the set twin now we can get rid of the twin max and end the timeline with a semicolon and now we can copy the parallax tl and pass it inside of the set twin okay so now over the duration of 100 percent of the scrolling we will play the parallax tl which has two twins on it okay so let's save the file refresh the page and let's see what we've got in a browser the slide comes into a view we have a text fading in and then halfway through it we are animating the image okay so the two twins are happening one after the other instead of happening at the same time so that means that the timing of our timeline is not correct when we're hitting the middle of the viewport the text is faded in and then the background image moves okay so we need to tweak the timing inside of the timeline and the first thing we want to do we want to make sure that the background image is moving as soon as the slide comes into view so we'll start this one at the absolute position which is a zero so type in comma zero at the end of the from twin of the background image that should make these two happening at the same time and if I refresh it oops don't save the page save the JavaScript file refresh it and now we should see both twins happening at the same time okay if I view it in a dev tools we'll scroll down and then back up you'll see that the background and content wrapper are both happening at the same time as soon as the slide comes into view okay so here we've got the starting values minus 50 percent and content wrapper is hidden and when we scroll up we'll see oh sorry scroll down we'll see the twin happening okay one thing we'll tweak and that is the timing of the fading it of the text as you can see it is visible way too early we want to keep it invisible until about here and then fade it in so we can do it very simply by changing the offset here to let's say 0 0.3 refresh the page again now we should see it invisible and make it fading in a little bit later okay the other thing is we want to fade it in much faster it fades in very very slowly that's where we can tweak the timing of the twins okay so increase the background image timing to two seconds and decrease the timing of the content wrapper to 0 0.3 and that should make it visible much earlier okay change it to 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 okay so we're just playing with the timing making sure that the that the image is moving from the start but the text is fading in a little bit later and quicker okay now this looks perfect so just to recap what we did in javascript instead of passing a single twin of moving the background we are now passing a timeline which has two twins on it and the twins are positioned on the timeline in a way that they both start at the same time actually the image 
moves as a first win and then a little bit later we're moving the content and fading it in okay so hope that makes sense if it doesn't make sense then review the video again or watch the green sock 101 online course where you can learn the basics of gsub api okay and this wraps up the basic demos of the scroll magic 101 hope you learned something new about green sock scroll magic and how to trigger animations at the right time if you want to take it even one step further join me in the green sock workshop where you will learn how to create more advanced demos like this overlapping and cropping slides or this revealing of a pen of the year cool animation based on real world examples and in the final project you will learn how to create a website like this simple one pager with cool green sock animations svg animations and a lot of interactivity okay all it's powered by green sock and scroll magic so everything is controlled by the speed of user scrolling thanks again for signing up and i'm looking forward to see you on my blog or inside of my other courses And that's it. This wraps up the Scroll Magic 101. Hope you've learned something new about Scroll Magic API and hope you found these tutorials useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any Scroll Magic questions or feedback. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this from the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front end development. Until next time, happy coding. Bye.